uh, components of agent uh, components of agent force so we have two components of it the first one is einstein truss layer so what einstein truss layer is uh, again uh, this is uh, something that we have covered in our previous webinar if you want to know it in a much much detail you can go over there and actually see it now for me to cover it in a you know brief i will be looking at the next slide so in the next slide as you can see uh, there's agent forced uh, you can see on the left hand side you have crm apps where you have prompts so when you type in any of the query when you type in any of the action that you want to take what will happen is the data the prompt will be there it will get the data that it needs it will make sure the data it is providing is from that context only which is needed then it will do data masking so your data about uh, let's say henry will not be sent over to the ai as henry who lives in new york who is a it engineer so it will be masked so that data will be masked so it the ai will not know okay what is it that this particular person is but you will still get the response out of it then it will make sure the prompt defense like you are not doing something to break the ai instructions and all of that so it will do prompt defense and then it will give that data to ai where it will do it will take the prompt it will process it it will give you the output while doing that it will ensure none of the data is retained on to the ai itself only so we have zero data retention policy with einstein trust layer so it will ensure that and once you have the response it will be checked for toxicity like it's not toxic it's not giving something which was not something expected then it will be doing data demasking when i say data demasking what it means it will again put henry back into the picture it had masked that it will again put back henry in the picture and then it will log it like what happened in the audit trail and then it will give you the response so this is the einstein trust layer it ensures the data the critical data that you have of your customers stays inside salesforce is not exposed in a way where it should not be this is what einstein trust layer is and it's a very core part of agent force next up we have atlas reasoning engine so atlas reasoning engine is the core part of agent force it is basically taking care of you know what needs to happen how it needs to happen so agent force uh, atlas reasoning engine is going to be the key brain behind the agent force it will understand what is it that the particular user is asking me to do it will check do i have that information do i have that capability if it has it it will simply execute on to it if it does not it will reason with it okay if he wants that okay if he wants to kind of you know create a case then i need to check whether this particular person already has some orders or not if he has it i will identify the latest order because he is saying i want to return my later i want to return my latest uh, order so it can automatically identify that and take actions on to it we will be seeing all of that in action and then it has a uh, retrieval augmentation generation rag which is basically retrieving the data from you know different different sources structured and structured and providing it to the ai so it can process it and then deliver responses so that is what atlas reasoning engine is so some of the key features of data retrieval uh, rag is like data retrieval it will be fetching the data from vector database that we can configure uh, salesforce is coming up with hybrid search where it is kind of doing semantic search as well and vector search as well it is combining both of them it will be ga in uh, uh, next few months i believe it uh, they have mentioned it will be ga in november itself only but who knows it may it might take a little bit more time so they are going to provide that and data retrieval is going to be a key player over there and we can configure our own search indexes as well how we want to do data retrieval we do not need to rely only on to salesforce automatic capabilities we can configure it on our own as well then we have enhanced accuracy uh, by, by grounding ai responses with the right data is going to definitely give us the right responses as well integration with vector databases uh, definitely we can you know integrate it with vector databases and use it for our rag purposes retrieval augmentation generation purposes uh, next up we have agent force and data cloud how it's all connected so data cloud is providing a structured and structured data audio video data zero copy capability and then atlas reasoning engine is kind of retrieving the data planning how to do certain actions then evaluate what i am doing is right or not then refine it and then again following the same process so it's kind of you know doing iteration of feedback on its own thinking and then doing certain action then taking certain you know responses to you 
and all of that within the sub second of a second you know like, yeah. like within milliseconds milliseconds yeah with the customer 360 data available to us then we have agent builder so agent builder is a uh, formerly copilot builder so it basically a low code platform that allow users to create and customize ai agents so basically what it does is it allows you to kind of create your own ai agents you can create an ai agent you can define what topic so topic is basically the things that it can you know talk about it can uh, act upon you can specify the topic then you can specify the natural language instructions you need to do this you need to take care of this so you can specify all of that and then we have actions so we can specify what all actions you can take what all things you can do on top of it so that is what agent builder is then we have fundamental building blocks of agent force so we can define the topics to be like you know order management uh, repairs general faq where we can define what this topic is what are the things that it needs to take care of in the scope section what are the things that it needs to do what are the things it does not need to do so we can define the guardrails as well so that is in something which comes into the instruction set uh, which we have specified always offer look up order status using either order number or email uh, look return status before getting a return label then we have certain actions like look up order status generate a return label so we have all of that capability available to us that we can then leverage we have agent force partner network as well so agent force partner network uh, is basically salesforce newest addition to the agent force itself only so you can look at it as like app exchange for agent force where you have a lot of capabilities where you have a lot of implementation partners that can actually help you go to market with agent force and you can use certain custom pre built actions as well such as docusign honeywell assembly and there are multiple other as well as you can see in the next slide as well there are certain partner agents like from workday we have uh, some from uh, ibm as well then we have certain agent actions that we can leverage from the agent force partner network which is basically app exchange for agent force next up we have prompt builder so prompt builder is the same thing that we had in our uh, copilot you know what salesforce copilot used to do so prompt builder is basically a place where you can create a prompt and then you can utilize it accordingly so what that means is so assume you are uh, doing a certain task you are generating sales email uh, on a frequent basis so you have a certain set of instructions specify the products in a bullet fashion specify when we had the last meeting what was the outcome of it and then create the email so you have a set of instructions like you need to do this then you provide some data to it and then you write in you know some additional information to it so you do all of that when you create a email template on chat gpt let's say now you want that you don't need to write all of that information again and again so that's where prompt builder comes in you configure all of the things all of the instructions over there and then you simply ask generate sales email for this record and it will do that so that is what prompt builder is so prompt builder is the capability with the sale, uh, salesforce where we can specify what it needs to do with the data it can access with the model it needs to use or that you want to be used you can configure all of that and in which particular format you want the data to be you can do that with prompt builder then you can use it for field generation uh, like summaries you can use in email you can use it in different different scenarios as well so that is what prompt builder is Uh, as you can see, uh, this is how the prompt builder will look like. We will be uh, seeing it in detail in our, uh, you know, uh, demo as well. Next up, we have life cycle of a prompt within Salesforce. So we can create a prompt template, uh, design a reusable prompt template, uh, uh, test and refine the template, uh, which is definitely uh, you know. Uh, kind of covered and uh, governed with the Einstein trust layer select the llm that you want to use in that and then uh, we have the capability of doing version controlling on top of it we can ground the data with the uh, crm prompt flows and data cloud as well we can use the data cloud data as well in this and then we have the capability of embedding it within sales email out of the box templates field generation custom templates and we can also combine it with agents in agent actions Salesforce has uh, announced 100 plus uh, prompt templates that it has created for different different businesses that can be leveraged 
for automotive media non profit communication financial services healthcare and all of that and there are many more as well then we have model builder so what is model builder so model builder is uh, you know so you have the capability to choose your own llm but now let's say you don't want to use a specific llm you want to bring in your own llm that you have fine tuned that you have created you want to use that now you can do that with model builder you can bring in that model you can configure it and then you can use it in your prompts you can use it in your ai generations in your ai responses so that is what model builder is we have the capability to bring your own model from amazon sage maker google vertex ai uh, data bricks uh, we have our no code machine learning models we have open ai bring your own llm we have azure open ai bring your own llm which we can fine tune and then use in our uh, kind of you know workflows so now we have talked a lot about you know what uh, agent force is what copilot is now let's talk about how they are you know kind of different from each other a little bit so uh, over here in the slides you can see the comparison between einstein bot versus copilot versus agent force so einstein bot was you know like primarily designed for specific use cases where we used to define what it needs to do how it needs to do with copilot it kind of enhanced we could configure you need to do this and it will take care of that using generative ai it could do that but it was still limited it could not go beyond that it could not do reasoning with that it could not link multiple copilot actions together and then do certain things on top of it meaning let's say you are saying uh, you have the capability of summarizing an order you have the capability of uh, fetching the review of a uh, fetching the review of the products in that order and then kind of cancelling certain products you want that all of that so you had three different actions you could not do all of them together but with agent force you can simply type in that thing and agent force actually execute all of those actions on behalf of it because it can reason okay these three actions needs to fit in like it needs to first fetch the order it needs to check the product reviews and then it needs to update the uh, product in that particular order so it can do all of that just an example there are multi uh, multiple other ways as well we can do uh, and go about it then we have task complexity uh einstein bots were primarily uh, you know not meant for complex tasks copilot could do but only in an assistive manner it could not do it autonomously but agent force can do it then autonomy obviously autonomy comes with uh, agent force uh, copilot was defined with specific rules itself only um, and einstein bot was like if else then do this so it was completely kind of you know configured uh intelligence so uh with terms of intelligence definitely uh bot did not used ai that much uh copilot definitely used it but it did, it couldn't reason on top of it but agent force can reason on top of it then we have data handling so uh the bots were limited to the data that was kind of specified that they could access and it was limited to that only it was primarily static data but with copilot we had the capability of you can access this data that we are providing which could be by the either via flows or app apex or with from context itself only but with agent force it has access to the data it can actually create its own query fire them and then get the response back for us so it can do that so you can see how data handling is possible over there and it can actually you know uh, do a lot of things on top of it then we have natural language processing so uh chatbot was only able to handle basic nlp capabilities uh you know and it would not be able to handle complex uh languages that we could use it would it would typically try to identify the keywords and then take actions on top of it but with copilot it changed it could understand better and then it could take actions with agent force it can understand the language and it can also understand the context as well and then take actions so that's what the difference is then we have learning capability so it has limited learning capability uh, uh copilot had certain more capabilities but with agent force it actually understands and it evolves with the interactions that is uh, that are happening with it then we have integration uh, it could not be integrated that well uh, with uh, copilot and uh, with agent force we can definitely do that and with bots it was very limited to the third party integrations that we could configure into it customizations uh, it was very basic with the uh, the bots with copilot we could offer you know certain specific use cases where we could configure it 
with agent force we have the complete low code capability where we could extend it and then we can use instructions to kind of configure what it can do what it cannot do which was something that was not possible with copilot you could do it but only for a small action for a small section you know like you could only specify order replacement you could only specify for uh, case creation you could only specify for case resolution but with agent force you can specify the big level instructions like uh, for case deflection you need to pass a case to a agent if the customer is very unhappy and he has been facing an issue for past two days so you can configure that with agent force and it will take care of that but copilot could not do that and then we have the scalability uh, chatbot was not that scalable it was limited to certain st- uh, instructions that we could provide copilot was uh, you know specifically for salesforce internal uses itself only and it could not go beyond that but with agent force it can go beyond that and it is highly scalable it can actually you know do a lot of things as you give it more actions it will as you give more instructions it can do a lot of other things on top of it then we have agent force doesn't just as it is take actions why we have this slide so this is because we want to kind of understand and make this clear to the people uh because i have been talking to a lot of people uh in uh, dreamforce as well and then uh, within my organization as well and within communities that i am connected to they are looking at copilot as you know like uh, if they are looking at uh, you know copilot as like it's just a assistive agent like there was copilot and now it has agent force they have simply renamed it what else did they do but it's not like that so agent force is not just a assistive tool it is something that can actually take actions on behalf of the things that you have kind of configured and uh, it will do all of that so it's not that agent force knows your business it knows what are your plans and it can take actions on top of it and it can scale it is not limited to one channel it can be exposed to multiple channels as well now i will take a pause uh, before moving on to the next section i will highlight uh, if you have any questions if you have any doubts that you want to uh, kind of clarify that you want to ask us you can drop that in the comment section and we will be happy to answer all of them perfect so i think we even saw that in reinforce when i was building my first agent uh, i would ask one question and then based on the, the, that conversation itself it will future proof future questions as well it will preempt the kind of questions i might ask so that it again like you said it gives context to the situation it can build on previous conversations and preempt the next set of questions the customer might ask so that's i feel uh, agent force plays a very important role uh, in the whole situation 